Hey, welcome to How to Write a Novel. So I'm back on uh, the beach, but it's, uh, it's a little windy today. So yesterday I was talking about this weird audiobook project I was working on that I'm recording on a obscure, deserted beach. But it's real start and stop because the weather gets fucked up. I don't know, maybe it's okay today. It's hard to tell. But the whole thing, it's just such a silly... Like, how could I complain that it might be too windy to record today when I'm there right now and I'm recording this podcast, you know? (laughs) But it's because if it is windy, I can pull the low end out of the audio file and it won't be too terrible to listen to. But I just don't want to do that for, like, an audio book thing. I want that to be, you know, more carefully produced than this podcast. But this is basically why I have not been chronicling this particular project, you know? Like, there's the two sides of being a sort of idiosyncratic, weird person. Where I'm sure, describing my process of writing a novel, there's probably a lot of weird stuff that people are like, Oh, I don't don't act like that, I don't think like that, that's not how I would do things. But I think that's valuable to uh, capture in amber because I'm very confident that uh, at the end of this road I'm going to have this cool ass book and I think this will be a really neat thing to go back like when I think of my favorite books like I love The Beach by Alex Garland I love that book I've read it like eight times like wouldn't it be great to have a chronicle if he had kept track of what it was like to write that book man I would love that so that's what I'm thinking with this podcast series like If this all works out, and if I have this really cool book at the end, it'll be so neat to go back. It's the kind of thing I would like to have, which is really the only arbiter of what's, you know, cool art to make. Is like, what would I like? What would I think would be cool? And surely someone else will think that's cool. Whereas, like, this dumb audiobook thing, that's the other side. This is the dark side of being a weirdo. Like, like how did I pretzel my brain around to convince myself that this is this is a like what what kind of a problem is this like this is the weirdest most idiosyncratic problem fucking imaginable like there's the wind but I'm trying to record an audiobook and I've convinced myself that it must be done outdoors on a beach during the winter time in Canada, so the weather is really getting in the way to the point where I'm like, I don't know, man, I don't want to, like, it's interfering with my plans of where I'm going to live. It's like, uh, I don't want to leave because I'm working on this stupid thing, but surely I can't stay (laughs) on the West Coast just to record an audiobook outdoors because it's such a stupid project that's so ill-conceived that who knows how long it could take. It takes forever because some days it just, I can't even work on it. It's just dumb. It's totally my own dumb little thing. And it is of no value, except maybe as an example of what not to do. (laughs) How not to let your dumb art brain, your little artistic thoughts and projects, how not to let them get out of control and run your life. Because this is so stupid. It's just so stupid. However, ultimately, I do like it, and I think it's cool, and I'm going to try to finish. But yeah, it's just, that's why I haven't brought it up in this podcast, and I won't be keeping tabs on it going forward, because it's just too too silly and too dumb. This is not a pattern that anyone else should follow. You know, this is not a blueprint for anything except my own personal neuroses. But to get back to the main event, to the actual process of writing a novel, which is, of course, what this podcast is all about, I did have, like, a little interesting kind of thought about that. Just about the idea of having, like, the principal project, of, like, why it is so hard to bring a long-term project in for a landing. Like, to write a book over the course of, like, a couple of years, to make it all the way through... It's interesting to me, like, why that is so tough and why it took so long for me to finally write a whole book, which is the the nonfiction book that I'm recording this audiobook for now. See previous episodes for details. 
But uh, I, I'm 38, and uh, I heard on one of Ellen Brock's YouTube videos, she is a uh, professional editor who does really great Q&A videos on YouTube. And she said that, like, the average age of a first-time author is 36 years old. Like, this is not at all unusual. It takes a long time for people to get their shit together and to learn what works for them. And it really is, like, you know, when she gets questions from, like, 15-year-olds in high school of, like, how can I get published while I'm still in high school? Is this realistic? And she's like, you know, not that it never happens. There's always those people, you know, like Silverchair put out their first album when they were all in like high school. It was crazy. Like every once in a while, these things happen. But it's not likely and it's not realistic because it's not even like, oh, you're just going to barely miss the cutoff. Like, oh man, you might not get published in high school, but Oh, you'll figure it out by the time you're, like, 18 or 19. No, the truth is, you are 20 years away from figuring it out. You have a long way to go. You have so much shit to unravel in your own head about how to stay focused and stay dedicated to a single project for this length of time. And that's, uh, like, one thing about, you know, the perception of time when you're young. Like, it really is crazy. When I learned that that my recess in elementary school was only 15 minutes long, it really did blow my mind because I would have guessed it was like an hour. I couldn't believe it was so short. How did we fit so much time into 15 minutes? How did it feel so long every day? When that is not even a fucking blink of an eye anymore. But that change in perception of time, the way you're an adult and like a year just goes by, like my apartment in Toronto, I remember we were watching Die Hard for Christmas, just me and the roommates. And then suddenly we were watching Bad Santa because it was the next Christmas. And I'm like, wow, that's fucking crazy. How did a whole year just go by? That's fucking nuts. But I think that's a big reason why it's so much easier to complete a long-term project when you're older because it's just the time isn't that big of a deal. Spending two years writing a novel is not a big deal. When you're 15, that's a huge deal. That's a huge percentage of your life. When you're 36, 38, whatever, who gives a shit? <laughs> you know? It's like, wait, whatever, man. Time just keeps on ticking. The days are just sliding by at light speed, and they're going to move at this speed no matter what I do. So as long as I capture a little bit, capture that little bit of magic every day, my fucking magical goddamn pot of gold will be filled up before I know it. Like, it's not even a big deal. It's not that hard to focus on something for two years. Like the, the book I wrote, the nonfiction book about the game The Last of Us, easily took two years. It took more than two years overall for all the editing and production and finalizing. But to actually sit down and write it, the bulk of the work was about two years. And that didn't seem that bad. When I think back, it's like, yeah, well, what else was I doing those two years? I'm glad I got a book out of it, you know? I'm glad that I kept my magnifying glass on that project long enough to get it done. And it just made it so uh, comfortable seeming to do again. It's like, okay, I can do that again. I can sit down for two more years and write this novel. And then if this novel goes nowhere and nobody likes it, I'll just sit down for two more years and write another one. Who gives a shit? It's not a big deal <laughs> when you're old. It's like, who cares? Two years is two blinks of the eye. So let's, you know, let's get something out of it. Ah, fuck. This is windy as fucking ball sacks today. Whatever the hell that means. But I was also thinking how it is interesting to look back at all the times that I didn't stay focused, all the times that I didn't keep my eye on the prize. Now that I've done it and now that I see how important it is, like now that I've realized the kind of the number one thing, if there was only one rule to writing a book, only one thing to follow, just the one sentence guide to writing a book, it's work every day and don't stop. That's all. Just don't break the chain and you'll get to the end eventually. Because traditionally, I wrote some good stuff, I wrote some bad stuff, but what did any of it matter? Because I never got to the end. I just didn't stay focused. 
And it's so interesting to see the times when historically I would have lost focus. And it's nice now to be older and wiser and to have, like, to have strength in the right area, to know where to flex my muscle, to know where I have to insist to myself, no, we're not letting go, we're not going to stop, we're going to hold on. And this audiobook thing was a great example, because yesterday I was talking about it and reminding myself how much I really do want to get an audio recording of that book so I can put it on YouTube and make videos about it. And I really do want it, and I got real excited about it. And like reminded myself, kind of rededicated myself to like, yeah, I really got to make that a priority. I got to, I got to do that. But it's still not the top priority. It's still a secondary priority. Because there is only room in my mind for one major project. This novel I'm working on, that's it. That's the big one. That's the one I got to stay focused on. And if everything else falls to the wayside, that doesn't really matter. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it's just the one project that I've got to hold on to. And it's interesting to realize that that really is it. Like, that's not just some arbitrary decision I made or something I decided on. I really only have enough mental bandwidth to hold on to one thing for two straight years, you know? To just never let go, I got one thing that I can do that with, and that's all. Because even this audiobook, like, yesterday I was like, it was like filling my mind, and then today I was all excited about it, and I was like, fuck, it's all windy today, shit. Like, I just, I don't think I'm gonna get any good recording today. And this audiobook thing was what was filling my mind, and it's just amazing to see how quickly and how suddenly the real project, the novel, has slipped to the wayside. I worked on it a little bit yesterday, but it just wasn't on my mind. Today, it's not what was on my mind. I'm all concerned about the stupid wind and this dumb audiobook project. And yeah, I mean, I guess just the, uh, the wonders of age, of just being able to recognize that this is happening, to see it, and to say, like, nope, no, 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 this isn't gonna happen. That's a little waver. I still worked on the book yesterday. I'm still gonna work on it today. I haven't actually lost step. I haven't missed a day. But I gotta keep that, that number one. And it's like interesting to realize when like self-examining, even though I might not work on the novel all that much on a given day, it is still, it's taking up such a huge amount of my mind. I'm thinking about it so much. I'm basing my whole day on working on that novel every day, day after day after day. And I really do think that's like interesting to realize of like the, the output on a given day, the time that I sit in a coffee shop and actually work on the writing is the tip of an enormous iceberg that is just like taking over my whole head. So that's why there's not room for more than one of those. There's only room for one of something that big in my head. Oh man, this is windy as fuck today. God damn it. <laughs> man, yeah, it is way too windy today. It's windy as fuck. But it's also something interesting as I've gotten older that I've learned. Man, who did this quote come from? I can't remember, but that as you get older, it's not a case of accumulating skills and abilities, it's a case of discarding, you know, discarding the things that aren't you, that you can't do, that make you crazy, and that's how you become stronger as you're older, and it's so fucking true, man, I've noticed that like crazy. I mean, even like something like traveling out here by myself, just that I don't need to have my friends around is like, that wasn't easy. That took a long time to learn how to do. And it's like, they're still there. When I go back east, they'll all be there. I haven't even been gone that long, but that's not something I could do when I was younger. I mean, to get real deep about it, just like dumb problems with my like family and my brother and stuff. Like, it just, you just gotta not care, you know, which is so hard to do because then it's like, well, doesn't that make me a bad person? Isn't it my job to fix everyone else? And isn't it my duty to support everybody? And it's like, 
after, you know, years and decades of misery of just like, yeah, well, maybe that's not my job. Or, you know what, maybe it does make me a bad person even. So, okay, then I guess I'm a bad person, <laughs> you know? Like when nothing else works and then you just don't care anymore and you're like, wow, amazing how much better I feel and how much easier I can maneuver through the world when I just don't care about all these things anymore. It sounds like an easy option, but it's not. It's a, def- it's a definite skill you have to learn as you get older. It's like, I just can't be caring about things that I can't change. It just, it's just like smashing against a brick wall. You're just going to destroy yourself. And it's interesting to see where I have accumulated that skill and where I have not. Like with the novel, it's like... You know, it's like, all right, I'm going to work on it every day. I, I'm not going to overextend myself. I'm not going to exaggerate to myself how much I think I can get done in a day. I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't get a ton done each day. And, you know, taking it all the way to the end of the line, if I write this book and nobody likes it, even that doesn't matter. I'll just work on the next one. Like, there's no expectation. Because, like, so much of the misery in life is based on what you expect to happen and if it's not realistic and it's not attainable or if it's just something you have to put in someone else's hands you're just going to be miserable and and like locked up locked up with the misery because there's nothing you can actually do about it and so as today is just a silly little example like it's funny that I feel like I've got my head on pretty straight with this novel enough so that I'm like I'm gonna document this I'm gonna make a podcast about this because I feel so good about how this is going and I really think it's gonna work and I really think this will be a chronicle of a guy who successfully writes a novel good or bad remains to be seen but uh but then on the other hand I'm just like getting worked up because it's windy today and why do I care about that why is that frustrating me because I mean, then you start going down the twisty fucking snakes and ladders goddamn passageway of nonsense of like, well, because I had this other book that I wrote and I wanted to make an audio version, try to like get people to know about the book more and I tried different places to record it and I found I liked recording it outdoors at this beach, but then I, I can't record on the beach unless the weather is just right and today the weather's not quite right and now I'm frustrated. It's like, why is the wind doing this to me? Why is the weather getting in the way of my plan? when this is not a solid plan. This is not a well-conceived plan. This whole thing is a weird flight of fancy. It's the dumbest thing to get worked up about. It's the dumbest thing to put my mental efforts toward and to care about. Because it leads to being an old man yelling at the clouds, you know? (laughs) It's like, I can't believe how windy it is today on the beautiful beach that I'm on. Man, that's another saying I heard somewhere. I don't remember where I heard this. It was pretty recently, but I love it. It keeps coming back to me. I heard it more in the case of not getting hung up on nostalgia. But I think it works both ways. Like, today it's like, because I feel like this wind is getting in the way of my future successes like oh, I could record this audiobook and I could do all this cool stuff with it if only it weren't windy today and the quote is just to not dwell on the dreams of the past or in this case the dreams of the future because you'll miss the dream that you're in right now and I mean right now I'm sitting on a log I'm in a little alcove so it'll be a little less windy for this recording I'm on this beach that is like one of my favorite places I've ever been in my life. It's beautiful. It's like when I leave the West Coast, this is what I'm gonna think back to about like, yeah, I do miss the West Coast. I miss that beach, you know, like this will be what I think about in my in-between times when I'm not here. This might be, I mean, not to put and big it up too much, but this might be when I'm 80 years old in some weird old folks home and I'm on my fucking last legs. Like I'll be like, man, you remember that beach, that fucking beach? in Vancouver, in Burnaby. Holy fuck, that was awesome. And I'm there right now. And instead of focusing on the dream that I'm in right now, I'm mad at the wind. (laughs) You know, like it's so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. But yeah, the beauty of getting old, of being able to unravel this stuff more easily. Like, getting old is not nearly as bad as... uh, 
you know, people make it out to be. And I mean, old quote unquote, 38 is obviously not old, but you know, it's closer to the end than it was to the beginning, particularly given the relative speed of time, you know, it's just going to keep speeding up faster and faster. Like a lot of the writing advice, when I look up stuff online, it is like young people, like the high school example is extreme but even just people in their 20s, in their early 20s, like asking about book stuff. Like, first off, I mean, I find it a little weird to even ask. I don't know, I'm just not that personality type. Like, I always think I can figure it out. I think I got it covered, even if I don't, even if the evidence shows otherwise. I like to gather advice from people, but I don't ask them, because I'm like, who the fuck are you? Why do you think you know? (laughs) You know, like, I just never feel like that. Like, somebody else could pull rank on me. Like, are you kidding? I don't care if you're Elon fucking Musk. You don't know what you're fucking talking about. You're not doing what I'm doing. So it's weird in a way to me to even ask the questions of like, give me your advice. What do you think? And and again, like it really can go wrong. Like in one of the earlier episodes, I was saying how I got obsessed with the show don't tell thing too much. And it's like, why did I even listen to that? What the fuck was that all about? I should have just gone with my own feeling on things and it would have been better. But it's weird because that's the the double-edged sword of being young is even if you get, uh, you know, some kind of answer that might help or some kind of guideline, are you going to be able to stick this landing? Are you going to be able to thread this needle and walk this fucking righteous path? Probably not. Maybe you just got to get older, you know? (laughs) Maybe you just got to get older. Keep toiling. Keep trying. If nothing else, maybe you'll have a shit ton of unfinished writing like I do that uh, you know it's all just fodder it's all notes maybe it'll be handy in the future but there's just stuff that's just not realistic when you're young I mean and not just in writing in so many different places like man even just like that I'm like you know what I'm gonna take a take a little time for myself take a little time for old Keith and not uh, get like hung up on not just friend relationships but any kind of relationship and it's just not an option when you're younger some of these things like for me they weren't it's like it's just uh just like a mania that just builds and builds and builds in the background and it's like oh man eventually like i just uh, can't can't walk this road by myself eventually i gotta go try to hook up with somebody and do some crazy shit and it's just gonna even though it's always a disaster even though it's always a total nightmare i like didn't have the option not to really not realistically if you're just If you're feeling that pressure every day, like every day, it's like, oh man, like where are my friends? I gotta go hang out with my friends. Or, oh, what girls are around that I know? Gotta go find a girl. (laughs) Like, eventually, it's just gonna wear you down. You can't go your whole life that way. You're just, you'd just be miserable. It wouldn't even make sense. You gotta give in eventually to the needs and the wants of the soul and the heart. But then as you get older, you're like, okay, okay. I guess I don't actually. And now I actually feel okay. It's like that that stuff can all be optional now. That stuff is more my own choice now. It's like, yeah, I can still go down those paths, but I don't have to. I don't feel compelled to beyond, you know, reason, beyond logic. Just but when you're younger, you do feel that way and that's just how it is. That's how you are. That's what you are at that point in your little evolution as a creature. But I think at some point, like, Mother Nature just lets go. And it's like, all right, you were, you know, if you were going to make something happen, you would have by now. I tried to make you spawn, and you didn't yet, so it's fine. Now we don't care about you anymore. You're a little bit older, <laughs> so go do whatever you want. I release you from the spell. And it's not so bad, man. Being old is not so bad. In fact, in most ways, it's much, much better. weird too I always had like a little like I always just felt too old for stuff like I remember still some of my favorite memories of seeing bands were just seeing like weird little local punk bands in the like the Elks Lodge in my hometown just these tiny little shows they're just so awesome but even by the time I was like 21 22 it's like oh man am I getting too old for this because like there's a lot of people here that are like 17 (laughs) you know and it sounds so insane to think back like really I was self-conscious about that like anybody fucking gave a shit but I always kind of felt weirdly like oh am I too old and it's ironic that I don't feel like that anymore now I totally am just like whatever like I just don't care it's one of those things like it just can't be overstated what it's like to not care it's like 
Because it's way different from just trying to convince yourself you don't care to actually not care. Man, it's a whole different scene. It's like, wow, you know what? I really don't care. Oh, I got in a fight with that person? I don't care. <laughs> oh, I am like, can't get along with that person? I don't care. Who gives a shit? What the fuck do I need them for? I'm on the beach right now. I'm in the dream right now. And of course, you know, everything is a balance. I mean, you know, this could seesaw straight over into like, hey, guess what? I'm a fucking hermit who's lived in a, in a shack in the woods for 80 years and I never talked to anybody. Like, yeah, okay, maybe that'd be a little much. But I guess that's what's interesting too, is like the idea of moving out here out west for the winter and working on this book. And like, yeah, every once in a while I go to a casino with my friend Vince, but mostly I'm just by myself. In the grand scheme, like when I do head back east, again, everybody's an adult now. Everyone's time is going by quick. They barely have noticed that I'm gone. You know, it's just no big deal. Where I feel like when I was younger, this would feel like, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? Am I the hermit now? Am I halfway out into the woods? How come I haven't seen my East Coast friends in a few months? Holy shit. Man, even uh, I started a horror movie podcast with my friend Ray. We only got to do a couple episodes before I moved out here, but we'll pick it up again when I go back. But I've known Ray since I was, you know, in like, I don't know, 11 or 12 or something. And we realized like, man, you realize that there was a stretch there where we didn't see each other for like 10 years? <laughs> but it's like, so what? Who even gives a shit? What's the big deal? Just because you, when you've known somebody that long, it's like, well, so what? We're adults now. It didn't even take us that long to catch up. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's interesting. It's neat. I like it. I like being an older person. It's cool. All right, I'm not quite sure exactly what the point of today's episode was, but uh, I think that's good enough. I guess I will say one thing that's interesting about, so uh, this chapter I'm writing now, this has really gotten into kind of what the, this book is going to be set up into basically four major sections. The first section is just this girl on the space station. By girl, I mean rhino alien. On the space station being uh, disaffected and alone. The second part that I'm in now is her kind of making friends with one of the aliens. The third part is going to be her getting control of the ship in this sort of insidious, slow way, which I suspect will be quite a short section and then the final section will be everything going to shit which will also be short so basically the second section it's the long one it's not really the second section it's more like that section two three four and five you know but these long conversations between the two characters it's interesting to see how that's going like it's it's going pretty slow like I've I've been breaking up the chapter into little tiny parts way more than I had done at any point before because I'll like write out point form wise like okay here's like a page of all the stuff that I want these characters to talk about but then as I break that into smaller pieces and kind of try to unravel the puzzle of it it's amazing how slippery it is it's like those eels that uh what are they called but they're like the slipperiest animal in nature where it's like when they show a guy like a fisherman try to hold one they've got like a hundred slime producing pores on their body and they just start just piles of weird slime just starts pouring out of this thing and it's like impossible to hold on to and that's what I felt like writing this chapter it's so twisty and slippery because conversations are so different from normal writing like I guess I can kind of understand when people say that they're not that they don't like conversations that's nonsense I still think if you don't like writing conversations you just need to fuck off I don't know why you're a writer just get the fuck out of here <laughs> that like offends me that's so weird but people that aren't good at conversations that's a different story it's like alright I can see why they're hard because if you just have uh, point forms of like here's what's gonna happen to this character or even point forms of here's things I want to describe about the environment like it's relatively easy to stick to the the plan and just write that stuff out where a conversation is not at all like that because you can't have a conversation be one-sided it's like that advice they give about writing a movie script like if you look at a movie script and you see a block of text that is like notably large that stands out then that's a big problem because that's not the way people talk People are just waiting for their turn to say something, you know? They don't have the patience to sit there and listen to you filibust about whatever's on your mind. 
so it's a little stilted in this story because the one character is kind of like a liaison HR sort of like tell me your problems person so he's much more willing to listen but still there's still way more back and forth than are in my notes and way less repetition like I noticed in my point forms of like okay you kind of already said that or what you are saying now is already inferred by what you said earlier like no one's gonna sit there and listen to you ramble about all this shit that's that's in these early notes so the conversation really it's like a twisty stream it's like going all these little places I didn't expect and like big parts of like oh I was gonna talk about this they're just like, what do you mean I'm going to talk? Like, what, she's just going to sit there and babble out this big fucking, here's what I think about my society, and here's what I think about this situation. And it's like, that's not normal. That's not natural. Maybe, though, I think this is why I like writing dialogue so much, is that it is the opposite of rote mechanical writing. Like, this is when writing as a game, as like a puzzle to figure out, is at its most robust, because it's... Uh, You know, it's got to be interesting, it's got to be engaging, but it's also like a little simulacrum of human experience, of people talking, which is so hard to do. Like, if you didn't need to make a robot talk, you could make a fake person pretty easy. You know, you could probably have a robot that looks like a human just walk down the street and not everyone would realize that it was a robot. As soon as it has to start talking to people, it's over. You know, you can't fuck up anything like uh, that chick Poppy on YouTube. Sometimes some of her stuff really cracks me up because it's like, you know, her, her whole shtick is like, she doesn't really state, is she a robot? Is she an alien? Is she just a weirdo? Who knows? It's just like a weird YouTube character. But all she has to do is say something slightly wrong. Call a dog a doge. Or just ask a weird question or phrase something in an unusual way. Or question something that no one would think to question and it's like immediately it's like whoa if you were an alien we just caught you you know you just like you got to thread the needle you got to be so careful you just can't fuck up because if you do anything even a little bit weird everybody notices right away (laughs) like whoa you're not from here you are a robot you are a stilted character you are bad writing you know like you really got to It's when the stakes are highest, when the tension is at its utmost as far as, like, am I a good writer or not? And I love it. I love it so much. Man, I love writing dialogue. It's the best. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm in the middle of writing dialogue, and uh, since it's all windy on this beach, I mean, it's actually sitting in this little alcove isn't so bad, but... But, yeah, I don't want to... I don't want to record a bunch of audiobook stuff that I just have to record over later to redo... Maybe tomorrow it won't be windy. (laughs) It's probably, it's funny that I'm putting so much work into this thing when in the end of the day, it's probably just going to be very annoying. It's going to be the audio recording that just has constant fucking birds in the background, just nonstop seagulls and shit. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Like if I wouldn't put bird and ocean noises in the background deliberately why is it okay for those to be in the recording in the first place of course they're not it's gonna be stupid as fuck it's really not worth getting stressed about keith okay okay so it's windy don't worry about it it's a dumb thing to worry about it's not what you should be worrying about so there's today's little ramble. I will talk to you tomorrow. For Song of the Day, let's listen to Clear Eye, Clouded Mind by Nata Surf. Because that's a great song. See you tomorrow. Yeah.
Listen to astronomy and all.